the man responsible for bringing the three body problem to Netflix and subsequently to our televisions was killed because of the three body problem and never even got to see it air, let alone film. This is the murder of the three body problem producer. Welcome to Patterns of Behavior, where we focus on the people behind the crime. I'm Ed Choi, and today we're going to be talking about the murder of the three-body problem producer. Our story starts in 2006 when a Chinese writer by the name of Liu Cixin publishes a story that's broken up into a series in a monthly sci-fi magazine known as Science Fiction World. That series, in the same year that it was published, goes on to win what's known as a Yin He Award or a Galaxy Award, which is China's most prestigious award for science fiction. That series is then published two years later in 2008 as a standalone book known as The Three-Body Problem, which ends up being the first in a trilogy known as the Remembrance of Earth's Past or Three-Body Trilogy. And The Three-Body Problem is a sci-fi story that depicts the past, present, and future where aliens from another system where they come from a planet with three sun stars orbiting one another, which actually represents a three-body problem in orbital mechanics that unlike a two-point system like a star and a planet, a three-point system, for instance, stars, moon, and a planet is going to be impossible to predict a long-term trajectory because the multiple mutual gravitational poles are unpredictable, which in mathematical terms means it's unsolvable. And these aliens are fleeing their planet to come to Earth to inhabit Earth and this book is essentially about humans trying to survive an impending alien invasion. But the catch is the aliens live about 400 some years away, which means it's going to take them about 400 plus years to arrive on Earth to be able to even take over. And the people know about it about 400 years in advance which means that the story starts with the 1967 Chinese Cultural Revolution spans past our current timeline and well into the future. And this great and beautiful trilogy is less about pew pew alien fighting and is actually more of a dissection into the human nature and how we as human beings respond to what is essentially an existential threat. And as we have seen from recent events, having survived through a pandemic, that human beings don't necessarily respond well to existential threats and don't necessarily come together to help one another. And as the humans in the story start theorizing about what the aliens are going to do and if any of the humans, if at all, are going to benefit from the aliens arriving, the story of the Three Body Problem trilogy is so intriguing because it delves into the unpredictability of life and about embracing the complexity of the world and learning and growing because there's always more to discover in life. So while Liu Cixin's book is taking over China, the next year in 2009, a man by the name of Lin Qi, who was born in Wenzhou, which is a coastal city in China, who was born to a father who ran a coal mining business, started a company known as Yuzu Interactive. And during the early 2010s, when the mobile gaming industry emerged and started to boom, Lin Qi was there along with Yuzu Interactive at the forefront in China making viral games that made Lin Qi so rich and successful that he immediately became a celebrity in China and was dubbed the billionaire millennial. And while Lin Chi is creating his mobile gaming empire, in 2012, Liu Cixin's book, The Three-Body Problem, was commissioned to be translated into English. And it took about two years for the book to be translated and fully published, partially because of the complicated Chinese history that a lot of the non-Chinese readers would be confused of. So the English translation had to include a lot of footnotes of Chinese history that a lot of the non-Chinese readers would need to know. And immediately upon the release of the English translated version of The Three-Body Problem, the novel started to receive critical acclaim. And people started saying that it was the novel that defined what the science fiction genre could be. In fact, in 2015, The Three-Body Problem became the first novel ever written by an Asian author to win the Hugo Award for Best Novel. And some of its biggest fans included Barack Obama, George R.R. R. Martin, and Mark Zuckerberg. And The Three-Body Problem not only went on to be nominated for many other awards, but won a lot of them as well. And the second and third books in the trilogy were then released in 2015 and then 2016. And Lin Chi was a different breed of entrepreneurs. 
different than the older school entrepreneurs in China who kept their business inside of the country's walls. However, Lin Chi was a millennial entrepreneur who had bigger aspirations of growing his company outside of China and especially into the United States where business relations isn't the best. And Lin Chi saw a big opportunity with the three body problem. So in 2014, he started spending millions of dollars buying up all of the licenses and copyrights that are associated with the three body problem. And it is said that between 2014 and 2019, Lin Chi spent more than $150 million buying up all of these copyrights and licenses. And while it was being translated into English, after Lin Chi read The Three Body Problem, he had a vision for the franchise, a vision that was akin to Star Wars, where Three Body Problem was going to be this global IP with box office hit movies and sequels within a trilogy, with supplementing TV shows, with animated movies and TV shows, with spin-off video games, and possibly even a theme park. So while buying up all of the licenses and copyrights for Three Body Problem, in 2017, Lin Chi hires a man by the name of Zhu Yao a 40-year-old lawyer who he hired to be the chief risk officer for Yuzu. And after just a short year of being hired to be the chief risk officer, Lin Chi appoints Zhu Yao to be the head of a subsidiary of Yuzu called the Three Body Universe, which held the rights to Liu Cixin's novels. And this new subsidiary, the Three Body Universe, was responsible for securing the intellectual property for the film adaptations of Three Body Problem, which meant that Lin Chi worked very closely with Zhu Yao to secure all of those rights. And Lin Chi's personality was described to be eccentric at best. You see, in 2018, Lin Chi, through Yuzu Interactive, met with Amazon Studios initially because, surprise, Jeff Bezos is a big fan of the three-body problem. And they were initially in talks about producing the show on Amazon. And Amazon Studios even attached big Star Wars director Rian Johnson to the emails, and they tried to hash out a negotiation over the course of eight months. And it ended up culminating in a face-to-face -face meeting that took place in Los Angeles. And a couple of the executives who was there at that meeting stated that Lin Chi was, quote, dressed as a gangster and even put his feet up during the meeting. One of the executives that was there described the meeting as, quote, one of the craziest meetings of my career and stated that they were at the meeting hammering at the final details that they had been negotiating over the course of eight months and literally just mere minutes before the deal was to be inked on paper, they stated that Lin Chi all of a sudden out of the blue stated, you know what, let's do a joint venture, essentially screwing up the deal that they were there to even meet for. And apparently the Yuzu team behind Lin Chi was visibly upset and perturbed by Lin Chi's last minute antics and guess who was there and was one of the people that was extremely annoyed at Lin Chi? None other than Zhu Yao. And while all of this is going on with Yuzu Interactive and Amazon Studios, all the way over at HBO, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who are the creators of Game of Thrones, is in the process of developing another show for HBO, which was at the time called Confederate, which was supposed to be an alternate reality TV show where the South successfully seceded from the Union after the Civil War in an alternate universe where slavery was still legal. And supposedly this was supposed to be a show about anti-racism. And you know what? I can kind of see it. Maybe it was supposed to be a show where they show you this extreme version of what racism would look like if the South had successfully seceded from the Union, but also being able to juxtapose and show that, hey, look, maybe it's not that different than what is currently happening in real world today. But in real life, the creators, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, are two white men who are pitching a show about an alternate reality where the South won and slavery still exists, which from an optical point of view, 
doesn't look great. So when the public got understandably upset after they heard about the development of this show, the show was immediately scrapped. So while David Benioff and D.B. Weiss were scrambling to figure out a show, Lin Chi meets with them in 2019. So while David Benioff and D.B. Weiss are scrambling to figure out another show, Lin Chi meets with them roughly around 2018 because he's teaming up with David Benioff and D.B. Weiss to develop an online game based off of Game of Thrones. The 2009 online hit Game of Thrones Winter is Coming. And this game becomes one of Yuzu Interactive's biggest hits. So Lin Chi just gives the both of them a copy of the book Three Body Problem. And he just asked them, please, while you guys are in Tokyo for the Game of Thrones press, can you guys please just find time to try to read this book? So on the airplane ride back from their promotional tour in Tokyo, D.B. Weiss and David Benioff decide to finally sit down and read The Three-Body Problem. And the two of them finish the book within 10 minutes of each other during the flight. And then they look at each other and D.B. Weiss looks over at David and goes, what do you think? At which point David goes, but that ending, right? And D.B. Weiss responds by stating, we have to do this, right? And the reason they had that reaction was most likely the same exact reason why this book was winning so many awards, because it was just so different. And like David Benioff and D.B. Weiss stated, just like Game of Thrones, they wanted to do this because they had seen nothing like it before. But that quickly fizzled away because as we all know, D.B. Weiss and David Benioff were approached by Disney and Lucasfilms to direct a Star Wars movie, potentially going to be a trilogy based off of a, based off of the idea of the first Jedi. However, Disney either immediately were like, hey, I don't know if this is going to be a great storyline, or it seemed to also happen right around the time that the last two seasons of Game of Thrones after David Benioff and D.B. Weiss left the show, started to crash and burn. So Disney might have just had second thoughts and pulled out. And as we all know, out of the blue, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss announced that they had just inked a $200 million deal with Netflix. And that deal happened because Lin Chi had met with David Benioff and D.B. Weiss and pitched them this Star Wars style franchise, which if you can imagine from the producer's standpoint, from the makers of Game of Thrones, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, they just lost a potential, not Star Wars like franchise or potential trilogy. They literally lost a Star Wars trilogy. So being pitched this Star Wars like trilogy and this universe that they don't get to add to, but instead they get to create from the ground up from the book material, it was basically like a win-win for them and Lin Chi, but also a win-win-win for including Netflix as well, which is the reason why Netflix decided to invest heavily into the three-body problem, not only inking the $200 million deal, but this show was one of the most expensive shows produced by Netflix, costing around $169 million to produce eight episodes. Now, over at Yuzu Interactive, just three months after the deal with Netflix and three-body problem had just been inked, and three years after Zhu Yao had been appointed as the head of the subsidiary that is Three Body Universe, Lin Chi, out of the blue, demotes Zhu Yao, significantly cuts his salary, and tells him it's because of performance issues. And Lin Chi then goes on to replace Zhu Yao as the head of the subsidiary with other executives. And once the Netflix announcement comes out about the three-body problem and Lin Chi and Zhu Yao's replacement are named in the article, but Zhu Yao, who had taken active role in not only acquiring all of the licenses and copyrights for the film adaptations, but also was the head of the subsidiary, was completely left out of the article, Zhu Yao became angry 
and started to get very resentful. And this part's kind of wild. Just as the court stated, it kind of plays out like some Hollywood movie because Zhu Yao also was a big fan of the American hit TV series Breaking Bad. And he started getting very enticed by this idea that this mundane teacher who was dying of cancer all of a sudden turned his life around into a way that he turned into a drug kingpin. So taking inspiration from Breaking Bad, Yu Zhao decides that he's going to build a secret lab in an off-the-grid area of Shanghai. And from within this secret lab, Zhu Yao goes on to set up a fake company that's supposed to be based out of Japan, goes onto the dark web, and proceeds to order over a hundred different types of poison. And from within that secret lab, he then goes on to test and experiment with those poisons on pets that he was able to find, including dogs and cats. And as immoral as the story of Breaking Bad is, how delusional is it of one person to see a show and see this man who's dying of cancer, who's trying to figure out how to make money to set up his family and take care of his treatments, and he's somehow able to associate that akin to being a person who orders hundreds of different types of poisons and then potentially kills up to 100 different pets, experimenting the poisons on them. Either way, between September 20 and December 2020, Zhu Yao began spiking a bunch of different beverages within the Yuzu office with methyl mercury chloride. Zhu Yao then took a probiotic bottle and prepared what looked to be 30 probiotic pills that were laced with his poison and then gave those pills to Lin Chi, who then proceeded to share them with his secretary. And after a couple of days, Lin Chi on December 16th, 2020, felt sick leaving the office and decided to go to the hospital. And while being treated at the hospital the next day on December 17th, the police are notified that Lin Chi was most likely poisoned. And the next day on December 18th, the police arrested Zhu Yao. And Zhu Yao refused to confess to the crime of poisoning Lin Chi. And Lin Chi, who was in stable condition when he initially went into the hospital, because the doctors were unable to identify what he had been poisoned with, were unable to successfully counter the poisoning that was taking place in Lin Chi's body. And because Zhu Yao refused to confess and help the doctors by identifying what poison was used, 10 days later on Christmas Day 2020, Lin Chi lost his life. And Lin Chi wasn't Zhu Yao's only target in the office. In fact, he tried to poison and kill four other people from Yu Zhu, including Zhu Yao's, including Zhu Yao's replacement as the head of the subsidiary, the Three Body Universe. And even though those four people fell very ill from drinking the beverages that were poisoned by Zhu Yao, all four of those people survived. And because of the tight laws around privacy, even though Zhu Yao was arrested just a mere couple of days after Lin Chi fell ill and went to the hospital, the details of his arrest and this case have not been released until recently. Either way, on March 22nd, 2024, the Shanghai First Intermediate People's Court ruled that Zhu Yao is guilty of poisoning and killing Lin Chi, as well as poisoning and trying to kill the four other co-workers and was sentenced to death for the murder of Lin Chi one day after the release of the three-body problem on Netflix in the United States. Lin Chi is posthumously credited as an executive producer on Netflix's The Three-Body Problem, which premiered to 11 million people in the first four days of its release. And Yuzu Interactive still owns all of the rights to The Three-Body Problem's film adaptations, including the TV version that was released in China last year, as well as any animation and even play adaptations of The Three-Body Problem. And Lin Chi's 24% stake in Yuzu Interactive, as well as his close to 971 million dollars that he was estimated to be worth is going to be split up between his two daughters 
and his son. And in my opinion, Lin Chi does kind of seem like the eccentric type, especially after the two executives who stated that they were at, there at the meeting with Amazon Studios and their recollection of what happened and how Lin Chi acted. And I'm not even talking about the way he dressed or putting his feet up. Those might be, I don't know what it is. It could have been weird power moves, but I'm talking about that power move that he pulled at the end where he completely just demolished eight months of negotiations to throw out something completely opposite of what they were actually negotiating towards. And honestly, that kind of seemed like a fuck you move and that he was purposely going out of his way to waste their time, which could be indicative of someone who maybe didn't love Zhu Yao's performance all along. And instead of just doing the right thing and cutting him where he needed to be, he used him to the point where Zhu Yao was no longer useful and took away compensating him for the work that he did. That does kind of seem like the kind of patterns of behavior that Lin Chi could possibly do, but that doesn't excuse murdering someone just because they were an asshole and took away the credit from which it was due. Because I mean, this person spent months trying to order things secretively on the dark web, creating a secret lab in an off the grid area so that he can try to experiment on these animals and no one would question that all of these pets are just missing and just never to be seen again, all to just be arrested two days after he poisoned someone. And then even after being arrested two days after he tried to murder someone, I mean, after doing all of this work to try to avoid getting arrested, then he could have saved himself by cooperating with the police and telling them what Lin Chi was poisoned with, but he decided to double, at this point, I guess it was like triple or quadruple down and just stand by his actions, which could have saved his life potentially because Lin Chi might not have died. And at that point, essentially the jig is up, but for someone to be that stubborn, to allow themselves to lose their own life over pride, that's that's not even evil. That's just not smart. Because losing your life, I wouldn't say is revenge at all. And you know what they say, success is the best revenge. And with that, I wanna thank you for joining me on another episode of Patterns and Behavior, where we focus on the people behind the crime. I'm Ed Choi. You could find me at Etch a Sketch with a J and all the social media. If you would like to help me keep this podcast sustainable, please think about joining the Patreon. Otherwise, if you are listening to this podcast, know that there is a video version available on Spotify and on YouTube. And for those of you watching on YouTube, please make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Otherwise, thank you for joining me, and I will see you on the next one. Stay safe.